Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you take a look at your screen here, we would like to wish all of the March babies a happy birthday. If for any reason I forgot your birthday or you didn't post it in the community tab, I do apologize. Happy birthday to you. I will be posting um, for April. That way I can go ahead and get the April babies rolling in. It will be over on the community tab. If you do not respond to the post on the community tab, I won't be digging and searching through comments in the videos. Cool? All right. So, if you are new here, or you have been here and haven't done so already, and you enjoy what you are hearing, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. It really does help the channel out, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With that being said, it is time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. I've had plenty of insane Ouija board stories, but this one strikes me. One time, me and my sister did the Ouija board to test out the scientific side of the paranormal. We had an EMF meter, which stands for Electromagnetic Field Meter, on hand. And as soon as we got messages or replies from the planchette, we test the surrounding area for electromagnetic fields because spirits and ghosts let off a electromagnetic field. Everything was going to plan. We'd get simple replies from the spirit, and we'd test the area. At one point, though, out of the blue, the planchette began counting from 10 to 0. Backstory. If the planchette begins to do this, you're supposed to say goodbye immediately. It means the spirit is getting very angsty impatient and violent. We began to quickly recite the goodbye, but we didn't do so before the planchette reached zero. We sat in silence, scared at what to do next. The candle began to dim, and the EMF meter went crazy. My sister picked it up and waved it around the room. It was going nuts. We ran out of the room, taking the meter with us. I've had plenty of experience with ghosts and spirits, and we both know not to test our chances. Yikes. Is this a story? Okay. So my friends and I, being curious and young, decided to play a Ouija board in the winter of 2018, after we started our freshman year of high school. We hadn't been able to get our hands on a real one because the roads were too icy to drive on, and none of us had one at home we can bring. So naturally, we made our own. We thought we were absolutely hilarious for making our poster board Ouija board as artsy as possible, writing every letter in poor calligraphy and decorating the sides with a pastel border. We had a shitty handmade board, and it was the middle of the afternoon in Texas on a snow day. Not many of us thought it would work. Not really. I was telling myself it was going to be bullshit because I was still vulnerable for my dad's passing a few months prior to this incident. But because of that vulnerability, I let myself have a little bit of hope that I was going to talk to my dad that afternoon. We lit some bath and bodywork candles and set on the shaggy silver rug in the middle of my bedroom. Each of us placed two fingers on the drinking glass we put on the board. The drinking glass that used to be my father's favorite. He'd mix Coca-Cola with whiskey in that cup, 
and I knew what I was doing when I picked it for our planned chat. A designated speaker or asker was chosen, and we were to feed her questions to ask the spirits, should they decide to appear. We started the session with joking around about my door ghost, as my bedroom door likes to fully slam out of nowhere and seems to have been possessed. The idea of there being a ghost that haunts my door is a running joke with my friends and I. We asked the board if anyone was there. It replied yes. We asked it if it was my door ghost, and it replied yes. We got the letters A, H, B, when we asked its name, and frankly, I think that might have been the spirit that came next testing to see if the board worked, as that's not out of character for my dad. There was a short spell where the line went dead, for lack of a better term. The board stopped talking, so we slid the glass over goodbye and promised to come back and play again after eating lunch. So we headed downstairs, ate lunch, and came back to see if any new spirits wanted to say hello. Our speaker asked if anyone was there, and the board replied yes. I felt my chest grow warm with that little bit of hope I allowed myself to keep. She asked the spirit's name. The glass slid smoothly to the letter H and started towards the U when I felt my stomach drop because my dad's name was Hunter. My friends asked me what was wrong, if I was okay, if I wanted to stop. I firmly told them no, I was fine, and I wanted to keep going. I told our speaker to ask if the spirit was my dad. The word yes was magnified as our shaky fingers followed the tug of the glass to the letters in the corner of the makeshift board. If one of you guys is fucking with me, it's not funny. I remember snapping. My friends insisted they weren't, and I believed them, but wanted to prove this was really my dad. What was my nickname when I was a baby? Immediately, the glass slid to the letter S, then Q. That was when I started crying. Squirmy, I said aloud, meeting my friend's concerned stares. He's saying squirmy. It's my dad, you guys. It's really him. I could barely speak through the tears. I asked Beth, our designated speaker, to tell him I missed him so, so much. Tell him I love him. She repeated what I'd said and then asked if dad had anything to say to his daughter. My friends said each letter out loud as my dad guided the glass over our pastel poster board. I-L-O-V-E-Y-O-U I love you too, Dad, I cried. I love you so much, Daddy. I miss you. I love you. God, I miss you. I was crying so hard I was shaking at this point, and my friends asked if I was ready to stop, and I nodded, and we ended the session with a swift goodbye. Who knew a piece of poster board we colored in pastels could serve as a portal to the afterlife and make me cry? In October of 2007, I was invited to conduct a session for a group of people as part of their Halloween festivities in the Spalding area, Lincolnshire. Having conducted a number of sessions for them in the past, I agreed to attend and conduct the session, by their request, at 3 a.m. as considered to be the witching hour. I produced a Hellgate board. Please don't ask, I will not tell you an oak for the event. Again, something I had done before and used to get some really good responses with. The event started off normally with the lighting of the candles, sealing of the glass, and a protection ritual. There were six of us, myself included, 
around the board and eight spectators, including my scriber, who was responsible for recording all of the board activity for review and a later time. We had a resident presence. Let's just call him our Fred. Come through and spent a bit of time with us, much to the enjoyment of the group, before we said goodbye to him and let him move on. Things then went really quiet for a bit before we started to get another response. From the outstart, something just did not feel right with this present. I can't explain it. There was just this feeling deep inside of me. We had a lot of glass movement, but at the same time, it was very sporadic. It would give us no information and refuse to follow simple instructions, such as returning to the center of the board. Now, initially, there was nothing abnormal here. Jokers and clowns do this all the time before they settle down. However, the force on the glass was slowly getting more forceful the longer we tried to make actual communication with the entity. As we progressed, the entity seemed to be getting more confident with itself, and the glass movement started to become even stronger, and it was spending more time trying to head to my line of limitation, located in front of the Hellgate, with the group having to physically stop the glass on more than one occasion. All of this time, though, not a single thing had been said through the board, and at this point, we still had no idea who or what we were dealing with. After a few minutes of this, the glass finally started spelling out things. But at that moment in time, it just appeared to be gibberish to us. It was my scriber that actually realized that we were getting a message through. The reason we could not understand what was being said was because everything was being given to us in reverse. Now, this is where I should have stopped the session there and then, potentially facing a negative entity and closed the board. Instead, I let entry get the better of me and allow the session to continue, something I have regretted for many, many years after this event. We continued to get responses, both in reverse and now normal phrases, mostly threatening those on the board. And then we started receiving responses in what we found out after the event through research, Latin. In my whole spirit board career, I had never received anything in Latin during any previous event. I had heard about it happening through my teachings, and apparently it was not a good sign. But I've never experienced it. The one phrase we got upon review that I will never forget was Angelus Reprobi, which we translated to Fallen Angel. During all of this time, we never received a name for the entity, and the glass got that strong in its movements. At one point, the six of us on the board were struggling to keep up with it. The session came to a finale with people now starting to panic a little, with the glass making a direct line for Hellgate on the board. We quickly applied all the pressure we could to stop the glass, and I found myself shouting at the entity to return to the center of the board. The glass started moving a lot slower than it had all evening. I remember thinking maybe it had used most of its energy during this dash on the board and fighting us trying to stop it, and positioned itself in the center. Then, the glass imploded. Now, understand this. This thing did not just shatter outwards or crack and come apart. This thing went in on itself. This, honestly, was the second time in my life that I actually felt true fear. After being taken back for a few moments and after gathering my thoughts, I conducted an impromptu cleansing ritual and we quickly and appropriately disposed of the board. Myself and three others experienced very disturbing nightmares 
following the event over the next few nights, and even more eerily, they all were very similar in nature. A very tall, dark figure taunting us from our shadows, faceless people being horrifically tortured, and the death of loved ones, all very graphic in nature. My marriage with my very loving wife also broke down very quickly afterwards, as well as a run of other bad luck that seemed to follow me for a period of time after. I vowed following this event that I would never have anything to do with spirit boards again and have not touched one since, despite numerous requests over the years from people I have previously met through holding sessions for them. I still have contact with some of the people, and who are still close friends, that were there during that morning and witnessed the events that unfolded. We recollect the night and conversation occasionally and laugh about it now, but there still exists an uncomfortable feeling of just how lucky we were to get off as lightly as we did. There are things in this world we just cannot comprehend. Using spirit or Ouija boards can open doorways to things that are really not very nice at all. I believe we encountered a very negative entity that morning. Even though I had done everything right and according to my teachings, this is why people who have used boards and had negative occurrences tell others to take heed and stay away from them. They are not paranoid nor overreacting. They have seen and experienced all of it for themselves and they do not want to see others harmed, potentially go through a diabolical haunting or some other misadventure. It was in the late 70s, and my best friend and I decided to try a Ouija board that happened to be among the things that her mother's father had left behind when he passed. This man was not a very nice man in life. My friend, I'll call her Joan, told me all the things her mother told her about him. He had basically made his children's and wives' lives hell on earth and Joan's mother married in order to escape it. When Joan told me about the Ouija board, my interest was instantly piqued. You want to try it? She asked over the phone. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be right over, I replied. At that time, I didn't have a driver's license. We lived in a tiny town of around 700 or so, and setting out on foot to her house was no big deal even though it was across town. I was so eager to get started on the Ouija board. I made it there in record time. Once I was at her house and she had ushered me in, she carefully pulled the box out that held the Ouija board from the closet in the mud room. I followed her into her room where we would begin our session with this relic that, to us, was steeped in delicious mystery and, even better yet, completely forbidden. Not only were we flaunting our rebellion by disobeying our parents, but we were stepping over a threshold into a dark, supernatural abyss. Joan took the board out of the box and placed it on a low platform on the floor, and I took my place on one side and she on the other. We each took a breath in unison as our eyes met across the minuscule distance. Neither of us had even the smallest flicker of hesitation or doubt. Let's do this, we announced to each other in a sort of telepathic silence. Uh, what do we ask, I said. We hadn't even considered that. A brief moment of silence as we pondered, and then Joan indicated that we place our hands on the planchette, and we did so with natural reverence for things unknown. Joan cleared her throat. Where are you from? She called out. At first, there was nothing. We frowned at each other. She repeated her question. 
This time, the planchette moved, seeming to glide across the board on its own accord. We glanced at each other with knitted brow, suddenly questioning the honesty of the other. Are you doing that? Joan asked. No, I came back, irritated. The evening was slipping across the room in deep shadow. The sound of the planchette as it made its way to a single letter was almost silken. Then it stopped. We made note of the letter as it quickly made its way to another. Here, it finally spelled out. I felt a chill. Joan was not convinced. She was sure I was the driving force powering the planchette. I felt indignant. Ask it something else, Joan almost demanded. I bit my lip and studied the board. In all of my 15 years on Earth, this was becoming as close to a scary movie as I could get. I had to make it good. Are you attached to Joan or me? I asked, grinning. Joan gasped, eyes open. We grew quiet, leaned over the board, and placed our hands ever so gently again on the planchette. And it spelled out my name. This time, I became the incredulous one. Stop it, I growled at her. It's not me, she protested. We had lit a candle, and only the soft amber light of a small lamp on her bedside table accompanied its tiny flame. The evening had deepened. We stared at each other across the Ouija board. I made note of her facial features in shadow now, adding to what I began to feel was the unfolding of our own personal horror movie. Innocently enough, we pressed on. How long have you been here? Joan asked. I felt my heart thump against my ribs. I wasn't sure I wanted to know, but I also wasn't sure that Joan was pulling my leg. I knew absolutely that I wasn't the one guiding the planchette. It had to be her. This time the planchette spelled out, Since you were eight, as if it were talking directly to me. This isn't funny, I stated, and Joan insisted she was not the one spilling everything out. She was as deeply convinced that it was me. Ask it something else, she practically demanded. I knew what I wanted to know, so I said it out loud. What do you want from me? The planchette paused. We had our hands lightly on it waiting. It made a couple of false starts, but then began its confident trek across the board to spell out the answer. When its answer became evident, we were both horrified. I want to fuck you, was its reply. I got angry and released the planchette and sat quickly back from the Ouija board and glared at Joan but the look on her face was equally angry and disgusted. Who oh, stop it, she shouted again at me. That's not even funny. I didn't do it, I defended. But then, just like that, the candle blew out. It was as though someone put their lips close to the flame and blew, completely with the sound of the softly forced air passing between them. We gasped in unison. The room was dark, but not completely. Now, the amber glow of the lamp was alone in providing illumination to the room. Joan and I stared at each other wide-eyed in disbelief. We knew this was an impossible feat, yet there it was, remaining staunchly inexplicable and frightening. I felt the hair along the back of my neck stand up straight. My heart was pounding. I wanted to leap into Joan's arms for comfort, but neither of us wanted to move. And now, just as we began to come back to our senses, the candle, just like that, relit. It relit, all by itself, on its own accord, 
with no one near to do it so. We both backed away from the Ouija board and the candle and then leapt into each other's arms and hugged each other closely, eyes riveted on the glowing candle, its flame calmly dancing gently with the unseen air movement in her room. This was no trick candle. It was an ordinary pillar candle that she had taken from the dining room for us to use. To this day, I don't know how that could have happened. We decided to put the Ouija board away for good, but strange things began to happen in her home. That didn't stop until she took the board out of the house and into the garbage can in the back of her house. Back then, we could still burn our trash in the metal garbage cans, and that's what they did with the Ouija board and theirs. Only then did all the paranormal things cease for her. I've never felt like there was anything to what it had told us about being with me since I was eight. So, I have no idea what that meant. However, I've always been sensitive to the emotions of others. I've been told I'm an empath. I've always had prophetic dreams and have seen unexplainable things that I really don't want to get into here. Regardless of that, I can't explain what was meant by that message, nor can I explain the candle. Is it possible to make your own Ouija board? Well, yes. But if you play, follow these rules exactly, or you're risking not very good things happening. If you do not know what you are doing, the Ouija board can be extremely dangerous. There are rules that you must follow. There are evil spirits that can harm you if you invite them into your realm. You must always be careful with things that you don't fully understand. The main guidelines you want to stick to are do not leave the planchette on the board unattended, ever. If the planchette is on the board, make sure someone is holding it at all times. Always say goodbye at the end of a session. Make sure the planchette goes to goodbye as well. If you do not, it's like setting a phone down without hanging up. The person could linger on the other line. Never invite any entity to make a noise to show its presence, or to invite it near you, ever. You do not know what it is and what its intentions are, so please do not ever ask them to show themselves. Don't let the planchette go from A to Z or 1 to 0, either forwards or backwards, because that is an incantation for a spirit to get into the human realm. If this happens, Stop the planchette and say goodbye until it moves to goodbye. Don't ever play it in a cemetery. That is just asking for trouble. The dead do not want to be disturbed. If someone goes into your house while you're resting and continuously calls you outside the door, I'm sure you wouldn't be very happy either. Don't ever let the planchette make a figure eight repeatedly. This is also an incantation to pass into the human realm. Stop the planchette immediately and end the conversation. Always play with respect. Imagine a Ouija board as an online chat room where you post your telephone number and wait for someone to call you. You have no idea who is on the other line. Respect whomever you're talking to or don't play you could be asking for serious consequences. Here are some tips I advise you. Start a conversation by asking if there is anyone who would like to speak with you. Patience is key. Just like a slow internet connection, it may take a few minutes to get a response. Don't bombard the board with questions. Ask something and wait a few minutes. If you don't get a response after a few minutes, try asking again. You may be having difficulty getting the answer you seek, 
because of the way you're wording your question. Try changing it up a little and you may be able to get a better response. The way you word things is extremely important. Yes or no questions are usually the easiest for a spirit to answer. It's helpful to have paper and a writing utensil around to write down the session, especially if they are spelling out a word for you. Just make sure that you or another player has a hand on the planchette at all times during a session. If you're worried about talking to a good spirit and to avoid evil ones, you may very well ask them if they come with the light or simply by asking them if they are good spirits. But be careful. Sometimes demons will lie though. Most will be honest and have no shame in telling you that they are a demon. However, it won't ever hurt you to be cautious. Please, don't use the Ouija board if you do not take it seriously. You can put yourself or others in danger. It is not a game. It is an oracle. It even says it on the board. Enjoy your time, but stay extremely safe out there. Let me begin by saying that I have never personally used a Ouija board, nor will I ever. Now, this is what happened when my friends decided it would be fun to invite me to a night out, deceitfully neglecting to tell me that they had purchased a Ouija board. My best friend at the time, no, the reason we are not friends anymore is not because of this game, knew I hated even the concept of Ouija boards. So, when she told me to meet her at my old high school at around 1 a.m., a lot of possibilities ran through my mind, but summoning demons was not one of them. Anyways, so I show up thinking we're going to smoke or, you know, something else. But no, I see her and a few of her co-workers sitting there with a real-life Ouija board. After a lot of back and forth, I begrudgingly agreed to sit in next to my friend and her friends and watch them play. The whole time, I sat closest to the parking lot with my eyes on my car in case I need to make a run for it. I'm a very paranoid person. I refuse to even touch the board while they play. It's dark. We're at an empty high school that borders a forest, and it's extremely creepy here. Everyone swears that they will not mess with the board, and they go over all the rules to playing with a Ouija board. They start off by asking the board some random questions and nothing moves. Everyone is getting frustrated and bored, and finally someone asks, Is there a spirit here? And the board moves to yes. Everyone kind of freezes looking at each other as if to say, which of you assholes moved the board? But everyone looked equally scared. They asked more questions like, are you a male? And it again moves to yes. They keep asking generic questions about the spirit, but one of the girls decides to ask about herself. Will I become rich? Will I marry someone in the near future? Etc. Etc. At this point, not only was I shitting bricks, but I feel uneasy because I'm kind of superstitious. Being Muslim, I believe that we do not ask spirits anything because it plays on dark magic, etc. I know that's not relevant. Anyways, she asks the spirit if she will live for a long time and the board says no. She gets kind of upset and asks, Will I die soon? And the board says yes. At this point, I think we're all shitting bricks. She asks, Am I in immediate danger? And the board says yes. After that, everyone was over the game. They dismantled all the pieces per the rules and put it away. I remember being so mad at being dragged into this mess and thinking I was going to be haunted the rest of the night. 
Anyways, nothing happened, and we went to smoke after that, which I think calmed everyone's nerves. The creepiest part was a few weeks later when the girl who owned the Ouija board texted all of us. That night, she had had a nightmare where she was playing with the Ouija board by herself, which is against one of the rules. She was so spooked that she went to her car to look at the game and found that some of the pieces were assembled and there was a long scratch down the edge of the board. No one in her family knew she even had the game in her car. She had made sure all the pieces were disassembled when putting the game away, and the game was brand new when we played, and none of us scratched it. So, how were the pieces assembled? How did it get scratched? Then, we realized that one of the most important rules was saying goodbye, when you're done playing so the spirit does not follow you. This might not be that creepy, but it certainly freaked me the hell out. Guys, please don't play with a Ouija board. I cannot stress that enough. Just don't. I'll try to be brief as I've told this story many times, but a friend was pestering me to play with the Ouija board. I refused multiple times as I was not interested in wasting time on a stupid Milton Bradley or whatever it's called, piece of cardboard nonsense. Eventually, I capulated in the spirit, no pun intended, of if I don't do it with you, will you stop pushing it? Lo and behold, it did. In fact, it worked, and I became enthralled, enthralled because it challenged every notion I had of reality. Some of the experiences featured contact with what claimed to be a deceased firefighter, things like that. During one session, with whoever, I asked if there is a god, naturally as this was already challenging the notion of a spiritual realm as science fiction. To this, the being became more notably animated out of all the questions. And by animated, I mean it was clearly enraged to the point where our fingers were slipping off the planchette as it skyrocketed across the board to squarely and forcefully land on no. Not to be mistaken with spelling N-O. The most telling experience, however, was when I asked where the being was. The planchette moved across the board to spell C-H-A-I-R. We were huddled together on one side of the table with chairs to the left, right, and one directly across. I asked something like, if you're in the chair, prove it. Well, for shit's sake, and I'm sorry for swearing, but it fits the mood, the chair directly across, lifted up and pulled out from the table in what I can only describe as a bizarrely jagged fashion. Just a disturbing, jagged fashion. It lifted and pulled out with no one anywhere near it. To make a long story short, after I stopped playing with the board, mainly because I had no one left to use it with, they became bored, but I was fascinated and wanted answers. I started to have strange experiences, such as waking up in the middle of the night, feeling like I was being held down and choked. Or seeing a black shadow figure pacing across the room. It should be noted that after moving in with my aunt, who I never discussed the Ouija board with, she said she awoke to a shadow figure standing in her doorway. Let's just say I didn't stick around there for long. This was all a long time ago, and I've been on a spiritual journey ever since. But I sometimes wonder if the reason why my life is so difficult is partly because of this. Although there are certainly other contributing factors. I always take a risk sharing the story and I'm just hoping none of it comes off as crazy. These are difficult things to describe and are not adequately validated. Often, 
outright dismissed in Western culture. I will say this though, don't let anyone diminish you for telling your story. A person who is staunchy, convinced in their own mind that it can't be so, is not the source of objective truth, rather being ignorant of spiritual matters. And you know, they do keep selling the Ouija in stores for a reason, because it actually works. I was once working nights at a hospital for patients with severe mental issues. Very few of the patients were actually physically sick as such, so we often had very little to do throughout the midnight hours. So one night, somebody brought in a Ouija board, and a few of us huddled around it to ask questions of the spirit. I was very skeptical about it until the glass we were using suddenly flew off the table and smashed against the far wall. That was unnerving to say the least, and I've never used one since. However, it's not really the story I wanted to tell you. That one belongs to my mother. My late mother was an absolutely no-nonsense woman, aka a harridan was not known for her sense of humor and certainly wasn't one to tell fanciful tales, so I have no reason to doubt her word. My mother was a divorcee when she met my father, and it was she who divorced her first husband, Frank. This was in the 1930s. Frank was a bookie and was often out of the house, taking bets at places all over town. One night, when my mother had been left alone again, she decided to pop over the road to visit a neighbor friend of hers. They had a few drinks together. Then the woman brought out a Ouija board, and so they decided to ask it questions. My mother couldn't really think of what questions to ask, but finally decided to ask where her neighbor Frank was, knowing full well that he was at his office. However, the board replied that he was at a local dance hall. My mother was shocked and asked further questions. What's he doing? Who is he with? Etc. The board told her he was there with another woman and further revealed that they were having an affair together. My mother, not one to sit back and do anything, immediately grabbed her coat and dashed out to the dance hall hoping, of course, that the board was not telling the truth. However, it had been, and my mother found Frank and his girlfriend there, and confronted the pair. I can only imagine the scene she created. Her voice, when raised, could compete with any fighter jets taking off. She immediately filed for a divorce. From then on, she always blamed the Ouija board for destroying her marriage. So, it's after school on a regular day, and my best friend, let's call her Jane, she pulls out her Ouija board and we try to start playing it. Keep in mind, this was a regular type of day for us. We usually played it after school every day. With no results yet, so it seemed odd. A friend of ours, let's call him John, suggests that we go play upstairs in this area where it was rare for anyone to go there. Sometimes the odd couple would go to the upstairs spot and do, you know, things. But anyway... I had a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach, and I mentioned that to Jane and John, but they just told me that it was good, and we might get some cool results. So, we get up there, then another friend of ours, let's call her Casey, comes up and joins us. So, with the four of us up there, we start playing, even though I mentioned it wasn't a good idea due to the horrid feeling I had. So, we got in contact with a spirit, and who else do we contact besides Zozo? 
He's one nasty, evil demon. You can look up all the details for yourself. So me and Cassie are absolutely terrified. We scream and hurriedly ask if we can take our hands off the board. So after we got the permission from the demon, me and Casey took off down the stairs. After I calmed down a little bit, I didn't go all the way back, but I went close enough right around the corner so I could hear them if something went wrong. Keep in mind, I couldn't see them at all. It's just Jane and John playing on the board, and me and Casey are just listening from behind the corner. All of a sudden, I heard Jane scream intensely. I turned the corner to find Jane and John running down the hall to me, with the board in Jane's hand and the planchette in John's hand. Jane falls and drops the board, and I run to her, and she starts sobbing. Not because she fell, but because of what happened. I held her for about ten minutes until she was able to tell me what happened. So, John and Casey and me and Jane are there, and Jane tells me that she heard our long, dead grandmother's voice say, I love you. So Jane calms down, and she says she wants to play again. So they convince me and Cassie to play too, and I give in and play with them. We ask him a bunch of questions. So about 30 minutes in, I get this horrible pain in my chest and my head, and I can't breathe. Everyone starts panicking and asks the demon if he was causing this. It moved to yes. So, Jane tells him to stop, and it stops. I regain air, and my head stops hurting. And after an hour, I realize that I'm losing energy and becoming very tired. We asked Zozo what was happening, and he told us he was draining our energy, which would explain why Zozo was moving so fast. So, we ask him to stop. But he doesn't. I felt a pressure on my shoulders, and when we ask why, it spelled out, Spirit. We ask how many there were, especially on me, and it said three. There were seven on Jane. John and Casey are unaffected. I realized later that if Jane could hear her grandmother's voice, I asked if we could hear our friend Jen's voice. Jen died from the flu a few months back. He moved to no, and when we asked why, he said that she was in heaven. We asked to hear our friend Jonathan's voice. He had also died a few months back, and it said that he was in heaven as well. So my dimwit friend John decides to ask Zozo if he could show himself. John looked through the planchette, and described how he saw a man's head peeking from behind the staircase near us. We asked Zozo if it was him, and it moved to yes. Jane then looked and saw the same thing, and according to her, and saw a figure that looked like her grandma. We all kind of sat there in shock for a minute. Casey asked if he would move her glasses if he was really there and it moved to no. And we asked what he could do then, and he spelled touch, and then he spelled my name. All of a sudden, I felt a hit on my shoulder as if somebody hit me to knock me over. There was nobody behind me. Wynn could not have just abruptly hit me like that. Long story short, I was terrified and without asking permission, I took my hands off the planchette and started crying. We said goodbye, and I haven't touched a board since then. It didn't happen to me personally, but to my mom. She told me as a cautionary tale, but it scared me so much that I've never touched or used a Ouija board. 
She was around 16, and she and her friends were having a sleepover. One friend brought a Ouija board, and they decided to use it. Apparently, they contacted the spirit of a young boy. They were getting pretty creeped out and wanted to end the session. My grandfather was a terrible drunk back in those days, and he barged into my mom's room and yelled about the amount of noise they were making, which, eerily enough, they weren't making much. He complained about all the banging and bumping noises he heard through the ceiling. My mom and her friends all stared at each other, even more creeped out. They were all just quietly sitting there, not jumping around or banging anything. My granddad spotted the board and got really pissed off. They were also strict Catholics, so he yelled at my mom about bringing that devil board into his house. He proceeded to yank it up off the floor and cracked it in half over his knee. For the next week, my mom and her friends were all tormented by horrible nightmares. Her best friend in particular was being slapped, scratched, and even choked by the entity. By the week's end, the same best friend died in a horrific car accident. All the activity ceased after her best friend's death. My mom cried as she was telling me the story. She lost her best friend because of a Ouija board and doesn't believe for one second that it was a coincidence. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Ouija stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Nat Davies, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Tammy Slayton, Luz Crispin, Colt Stone Wolf, Denise S., Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Cindy Cleveland, and Batty's Niece. Thank you all so much for your continued support of Back to Ashes. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. That's all I can say. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.